Tammy, thank you so much for that beautiful beginning. And welcome, welcome to the MLK Convergence interview series, Pathways to Peace in Ukraine. My name is Tessa Kaya Gabriel. I'm the executive director of Pathways to Peace, the organization. Pathways to Peace is conducting these interviews for a total of seven days, beginning uh, last Friday and ending February 23rd in this Zoom room and at this time, 11.30 to 12.30 Eastern time. We will be interviewing incredible peace leaders, including our beautiful Tammy Briggs today. Um, as we lead up to the beloved community convergence, <clears throat> excuse me, on February 24th and 25th, and the summit on the Ukraine that will take place on February 27th through March 3rd, um, hosted by Humanity Rising. So I will put that information in the chat. Um, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us in this sacred circle. So I have the honor and the pleasure to be hosting an interview with my beloved friend and colleague, Tammy Briggs from Musical Reflections. Tammy is a therapeutic harpist and a peace activist. So let me tell you a little more about our amazing Tammy Briggs. So after receiving her international harp therapy program certification, Tammy founded Musical Reflections located in Minneapolis, Minnesota in 1999. <clears throat> Tammy has produced 15 CDs for relaxation and written two books. Her newest project is fulfilling her dream of using her harp for world peace by founding Healing Harps for Global Peace and Unity. Harpists around the world who play with love for unity, peace, and planetary healing. Through the vibrations of the harp, the musical intention is to help you connect with your own inner peace so that you can radiate it out, bringing peace and calm to our world. Prior to Musical Reflections, Tammy co-founded a cross-cultural training company. Tammy developed training materials for 35 countries and helped business people on five continents increase their international business success by developing cross-cultural skills. She's lived and worked in Switzerland and taught American culture in Kyoto, Japan. Tammy has an MBA from the University of Missouri, Columbia, and she currently lives in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Tammy, thank you, thank you so much for being here. It is such a joy and delight and honor <laughs> to be with you today and, and always. Anytime we get to work together is a joy, so thank you. <laughs> it is so true. And so, um, Tammy, I'm, I'm going to ask you uh, some questions, but they're intended to just really prompt the conversation. So please don't be limited by those. Uh, essentially, we just want to hear whatever is on your heart and whatever you'd like us to know. So my first question is, uh, please tell me about your personal path to peace, your story, and where it has taken you. So as you mentioned in my introduction, I lived in Switzerland. I was a part of the 4-H organization. The 4-H organization has an international branch called the International 4-H Youth Exchange, or IFI, which stands for I'm the fool you expected, depending on the day <laughs> and culture shock. And yes. Switzerland was my host country and it was my first choice and I think I was the only iffy ever that got their first choice to live in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And it was an amazing experience. I lived with six host families. I 
really integrated into the culture as much as I could. And when I came back, I remember sitting at my parents' dining room table and I said, I want to work for peace. I want to work for world peace the rest mm -hmm. of my life. And my dad said, well, then you need to go join the military. And I said, mm, no, I don't want to <laughs> join the military. And he said, well, if you're not going to join the military, then you need to go get a job. So I went and got a job. And in the back of my head, the whole life, my whole life, I have wanted to work for world peace. And I believe many of the activities that I have done professionally have been with that goal in mind, but not not with full intention, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when the pandemic hit, well, let me back up just a minute. So for the past 20 years, I have been playing the harp at the hospital and hospice bedside, using it as a way to help people heal. And if it was a hospital patient, it was about moving back out into the world. And if it was a hospice patient, it was about helping them journey into whatever is next. And combined with playing at the bedside, I was an international speaker about using music as a healing modality. Yes. And I was getting very tired. I was tired of carrying my harp around. I was tired of schlepping boxes with the 15 CDs and two books. And I had been asking the universe, I don't know what's next, but I need something different. Well, careful what you ask for, because then the <laughs> pandemic happened and my whole business model went out the window. Literally overnight, I lost all of my business. And it took me a while to discern and figure out what was next. But through our mutual friend, Erica, she introduced me to Pathways to Peace. And as they say, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> We're so grateful. <laughs> yeah. So um, Erica really gets what the music is about, which is really about peace. And she invited me through Pathways to present at the United Nations Commission on Status of Women. And actually that I didn't present, I, I just played, but I felt like a kid in a candy store and, um, and have, you know, just continued down the path with you, Tez, and many of the um, Pathways to Peace folks and what a love affair. Really, really grateful, really grateful. Yes. Um, so Tammy, you know how mutual that love affair is. We adore you and you have brought such beauty and such um, a hot, an opportunity uh, through your beautiful music and your understanding of it really uh, into that higher frequency for peace. So thank you so much for all of that. Yeah, and as you say that, a song is coming to mind, and it's actually the music that I have on my music stand at the moment. It's So may I play? Oh, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, it's, it's a song called Infusion of Love, and what I believe this summit is that you're working on with all of these interviews is really about love. And we just came out of St. Valentine's Day this past week. And um, I think part of what's happening on the planet is that elevation of love. And this song was written by a fellow harp therapist, um, Sarah Jane Williams. And I want to just share a quick story about this song because it's um, it holds special meaning to me. So right after the pandemic hit in Minneapolis, we had the situation with George Floyd. 
It happened about 10 miles from my home. And I know you're also in Minneapolis, so it was, you know, very close to you as well. And the next day after that situation happened, it was very scary in our city, in our community. And then, of course, it went viral around the world. And a lot of my friends called me and said, oh, my gosh, I'm so distraught. What are we going to do? And I said, I will play for you. And it was really a play on words for I will pray for you. Instead of offering prayers, I came to my harp and played. And when I sat down at my harp, I had been frantically cleaning my house. Remember how everybody was cleaning their house during COVID? <laughs> and I was cleaning and I found this piece of music, Infusion of Love, in the harp therapy journals that I was cleaning and I had never played it. And when I sat down and I played it the first time, I thought, oh my gosh, this piece of music is so perfect for our time right now. And I would play it and I would pause and I would take a breath and I would feel drawn to play it again. And I would pause and take a breath and I'd play it again. I played this song hundreds, hundreds of times the days after George Floyd. So it's a beautiful song called Infusion of Love. I mean, that was just so beautiful and so perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And Ooh. that that song, um, just one more thing to say about it, really inspired me to play every day for the next 365 days. And I journaled and took notes every day about what was happening energetically at my harp. And that was all about the peaceful vibrations and all about helping the planet. And that's where Healing Harps for Global Peace and Unity came from. And eventually those messages that I got for 365 days will likely be a book and, um, but that's to be determined as we do in the future. <laughs> Thank you for all of that. And, and we know that 
at the root of peace is love, that our entire peace movement is driven by love. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that beautiful piece. And you started to talk a little bit about this, and I'd love to know more about your current work and perhaps even um, uh, any future, any thoughts you have about the future of your work. And so whatever's on your heart to tell us about your current work. So my current work with the peace movement is really helping with raise vibration, raise consciousness, raise the frequency, if you will. Um, yesterday, as an example, I was on two different Zooms with um, Global Coherence Pulse and Awakening World. And I played for both of those events, and I really see the harp as a magical instrument to help us raise our vibration, increase our frequency, and also kind of as a paradox, move us into our own inner peace. And when we move into that inner peace, then that's what we radiate out as a higher vibration and frequency. And the harp is, the harp is one of the most vibratory instruments because it's all of these strings that are open. And yes, you can do the glissando on the piano that same way, but it hurts your hand for one thing. <laughs> And it just doesn't have the same magical effect. And um, because the strings are open, that's what connects out into the, the ethers, if you will. And it works on Zoom. I mean, I know it's much better if you're here in my living room, but it also works on Zoom. So that's a little bit of what I'm doing with the, the peace movement. And I was actually working with Dot Maver about a month ago, who is the Global Silent Minute um, leader and facilitator, and she said something to me that I thought was really interesting, and she said, I think your role in the peace movement is taking your healing harp and marrying it with peace. And so that I love that because it's the integration of harp therapy, which is what I've spent the last 25 years doing, and now merging that with peace. So that's a little bit about what's in front of me. And um, yeah, I'm very jazzed and very excited if you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we join you in that. Okay. And so you, I know you have some things coming up that you are, um, that are open to the public. I'm thinking, of course, about CSW, but there are probably other things that are on your calendar and coming up. Um, can you tell us a little bit about some of those things that others might wish to join you sure. um, for those events? Yeah, so every first Monday of the month, I do a peace meditation that is sponsored by the E Club of World Peace that Rotary International has. And it starts at seven central and it goes for an hour. And we usually pick a topic like in February, we picked love because obviously <laughs> it was, you know, the month of love with Valentine's. And, um, the month of January, we really looked at new beginnings and new life and changing, you know, like when you flip the calendar, what's the new vibration of the year? And in March, it'll be on March 6th, and we meditate for an hour in silence, and then I play intermittently throughout the hour to help us stay focused and hold our vibration up. And they're very powerful. Um, and it's really about building community. And then you mentioned um, the CSW, which is the United Nations Commission on Status of Women. 
and I'll be part of a panel on March 9th. And that one is at six to eight central on March 9th. So I'm very excited about that. And that one is all about consciousness. And that's so much in my wheelhouse with the harp. And I just am really, really grateful for that opportunity and excited. And it always feels to me like coming full circle back because that's how I started with Pathways to Peace was through the United Nations. And yeah, yes. wonderful. Yes. We've, it's been, I think this is your third uh, commission on the status of women with Pathways to Peace. And so, and we've featured your music, we've featured your message, which always gets rave reviews. Um, and I'm so delighted uh, that this is kind of uh, Pathways to Peace's first um, event at UNCSW 67, even though we've been at, at CSW for years, the first one on consciousness. So I feel like we're bringing consciousness into the UN, which yeah. is so very important. Um, so I think I'm going to move us, Tammy, into our peace wave. And um, so let me start by saying that a part of each one of these uh, interviews around Pathways to Peace in the Ukraine um, is really uh, to honor our beloved Avon. Avon Madison, who is the founder of Pathways to Peace and really um, provided leadership um, around some uh, incredible United Nations um, initiatives, including the International Day of Peace, which is celebrated on September 21st um, by millions of people around our globe. And Avon was one of the peace leaders, a key peace leader, in working with um, Assistant Attorney General of the UN, Robert Mueller, in getting that resolution passed. And it was passed unanimously by the United Nations. And so as the story goes, as it relates to the peace wave, that a year had passed since the resolution was adopted. And in uh, 1983, Robert and Avon were talking about the fact that not much had really happened after the um, resolution was passed and it was passed unanimously. And so um, together, uh, of course, mostly with Avon's leading, um, they decided to create um, a moment, a minute of silence, a moment of peace, which became the peace wave. And um, it was to be, and still is, um, it was to be, uh, practiced at 12 noon in every piece, in every time zone. At that time in 1983, and it's still true today, um, because the, uh, the United Nations was birthed in San Francisco, that they decided to do 12 noon in San Francisco. And there was a huge celebration, a moment uh, in San Francisco that with, with 19 countries involved in that first celebration. And in that uh, 1984 first International Day of Peace in San Francisco, um, the moment of silence uh, was used and the TV channels stopped, the radio channels stopped um, for that that minute of silence, moment of peace, the peace wave. But originally for Robert and Avon, it was to open the United Nations, which opened at three. So 12 noon in San Francisco um, was three o'clock in New York in uh, the General Assembly. To open the General Assembly with the peace wave. And so, Today, the peace wave is truly um, practiced by folks around the world who pause 
at 12 noon in their time zone, creating a wave of peace going around the world. And so the peace wave itself is so easy to practice because it's a one moment break, one minute at 12 noon where all of us can hold that energy of peace, however that looks and feels for us. So we're going to do that today. And I'm going to ask Tammy, as I have many other times, um, to play as we move into that peace wave. And I'm going to ask all of you who are watching this video or in the room to just allow yourself to relax into the beautiful music of the heart. To breathe a little bit more slowly. To breathe a little bit more deeply. And if it helps you to count, you can count five counts on the inhale and five counts on the exhale. We're just going to relax into our breath, letting go of everything that distracts us and just focus on our breath. We all breathe. It's the one breath. So let us just breathe for a moment together. We're grateful for our dear Avon, who guides and directs our work from the other side of the rail. And pay tribute to her. As we breathe that one breath. And now we ask you to focus on the center of your chest, the seat of the heart. heart that is the energy of peace, that heart energy of love and nurturance, kindness and compassion. As our breath comes in and out through that sacred space. We see that energy and we allow our hearts to expand, filling every cell in our body with love as we move into that beautiful peace and the silence of that peace. Oh, goodness. Once one goes there, it's easy to want to stay there. <laughs> and so thank you, all of you. And we hope you'll join the wave, the peace wave at 12 noon in your time zone. And so we're going to pick up our interview with Tammy. And you know, Tammy, that we are leading up to humanity 
Rising's call to action on the war in Ukraine, which is following that beloved community convergence on February 24th and 25th. And as I said earlier, the summit on the Ukraine will take place um, March 3rd. I'm sorry, February 27th through March 3rd, remember, and is hosted by Humanity Rising. So the title of this series of interviews is Pathways to Peace in the Ukraine. So what are your thoughts, Tammy, on the ways we as peace builders might respond to that call? Well, in the world I live in, I see music as a bridge. And one of the things I'd like to share about that song I just played, it's called Peace Blessing. And that song was the first song that Avon ever heard me play. And it makes me weepy to talk about this, but when I played it, she said, oh, I'm not going to take time on our Zoom. There were, I don't know, eight or 10 of us on a Zoom. And she said, I'm not going to take time, but I will call you to give you feedback. And I thought, oh, you know, she's famous. She'll never call me. <laughs> She'll, you know, the, oh yeah, okay, whatever. But she did. She called me and she said, that song was what I heard as a little girl. And I knew that the harp was a part of the peace movement and that that was what I've been waiting for my whole life. And so every time I play that song, and I mean every time, I feel her. She comes around my shoulders as I'm sitting at the harp and I can literally feel her, I have chills everywhere and it's not because I'm cold. I can feel her come through my hands when I play that song. And so it's very special, Tez, for me to get to work with you in the Peace Wave in that way. And I always finish the peace meditations that I mentioned earlier with that beautiful song because I also, to answer your, to come back to your question, not only is music a, as a bridge, but there's a lot of people on the other side in spirit world now that have transitioned that are also helping with this um, gargantuan task that we have in front of us to move us from a militaristic, um, war like model to being peace and in that pathway of peace. So when I say music is a bridge, what I would invite people to think about is what music resonates with your soul and be very intentional about that as a way to bring you to peace and when, you know, if every single person around the globe, 8 billion of us were at peace, we would not have war, really. So music is a way to help us. And I want to, I'm going to share, if it's okay, I'd like to share a couple of different songs. So the first song is a song that's familiar that I think most people will recognize. And I'll share that first, and then I'll share something that's not familiar, and I'll talk to you a little bit about both of them.
Tammy, you know, that's one of my favorites. It always brings tears to my eyes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome. And so sometimes familiar music can take us into that really magical place within our heart to help us heal. And that's part of the reason I believe it's one of your favorites. And I actually yes. knew that it was your favorite, but um, <laughs> it's, you know, it's such a beautiful song and it takes us to the sound of music. And sometimes that familiarity is not at all where we want to go. We might want to do something that's a little bit more meditative. So I'll play something that's a bit more drifty and more meditative and let you just go wherever you need to go. And this is what I'm talking about when we use music with intention and when we use music as a way to bridge our own peace with what we want to create in the world. Beautiful. I could feel my open heart on that one, Tammy. Thank yeah. you so much. And so when we have our open hearts, that's what we want to radiate, radiate out to our world leaders, to our governments, to the people that are in decision-making power and um yeah I, I was i was in conversation with someone and we were talking about you know when we have a war within ourselves, then that's what we that's what we see outside and so it's really about um, taking care of business like cleaning up our own you know, our own wars within ourselves so that we can be peaceful and radiate out. And, and I think it's not easy work. You know, this is not what I'm talking about is not easy. But I believe it's where we're at as a collective and individually. Yeah, yeah thank you so much, Tammy. And I think it's where our power lies as well, right? In that, as you said, whatever um, is in our heart is what we're putting out into the field. So if we're warring within our heart, what we're putting into the field is war. And so it's our, our individual and collective power to be able to hold peace in our hearts and radiate that peace of love into the field. And I think for some of us, I'll, when I say these things, oftentimes I feel like they're received as inadequate around what we can do. And so I just feel like it's so powerful. We are so powerful. Our collective energy, individual as well, but truly collective energy for peace is perhaps the most powerful thing we can do. Yeah, and I think we're reaching a tipping point. Yes. You know, I think, you know, as we 
elevate our own um, vibrations and our consciousness, which is what Pathways to Peace is all about, is raising and elevating our consciousness around peace. Yes. And, you know, it, it feels like it feels like a train, you know, like, oh, we just added another person on the caboose and there's another person that came on and there's another person that came on and pretty soon it's going to be this great big runaway freight train and there'll be a whole bunch more of us, meaning, and I don't mean us and them, but us as as the the big peace movement and um so when you were talking about power, I think it's power with, you yes. know, it's not power over. Never. And it's power with all of these like-minded folks that are, you know, we're here to change. We're here to change consciousness. We're here to bring in the new earth. And somebody, I heard somebody say it maybe it was last week, I don't remember when it was, but they were talking about the new earth and they said, you know what, we need to feel the new earth inside of us and that's how we birth it. Mm -hmm. And if my music could be any part of that vibrational um, helping of people feel that new earth within to radiate that out, that would be, then I have you know, life well lived, I don't know, journey complete. <laughs> um, and just as the guide said to me when I got the charge to co-create the new earth, you know, and know that you're already doing it. And you are. Yeah. And we know we can't do it alone. Um, but we are doing it. We are co-creating that new earth. Everything that you do, Tammy, with your heart, heart, and your harp, um, <laughs> both infused and integrated in such a powerful and beautiful way. Yeah, is and I'm, I'm giggling because it, like, it's sometimes, in fact, you know, yesterday I was on the phone with a friend and I said, are you saying heart or harp? <laughs> <laughs> they they are so integrated for and they're, yeah but it's just funny how they're both h words and they're both you know like it's hard if you're not really articulating it articulating what it is yes so the song that keeps coming to my mind as we're talking about this is the beautiful song dona nobis pachim yes which means let there be peace yeah. so um i'd like to share that because i think that um I think that really resonates. And as I play this, maybe an invitation to um, have people move into their own hearts, but then also sending this specifically to the Ukraine and our brothers and sisters in Russia. And, um, and I, the vision that I have is almost like, and especially because it's their winter too, like it is here in the United States or in the North, is this blanket of, peace and calm and love and radiating into each of the leaders, but also into the collective people that can do the grassroots peace movement as well. So Dona Nobis Pachem.
so beautiful. The essence of peace. So, what if any advice? We know that there are no coincidences and that everyone that is in the room or viewing this um, video uh, are there for a reason. They are, um, as we say, a pathway to peace. And so I wonder if there's any advice that you would share uh, that might be helpful as we approach our work together. And by this, I mean our global um, work together with all those beautiful hearts and spirits um, within our movement and beyond. Um, on our planet and beyond. Uh, what advice might you share them that could be helpful in our work for peace in the Ukraine, but really um, in our world? There are so many, as you know, conflicts. Um, so any words of advice? So what I have behind me is an artist depiction of my life. And it's hard to see the whole thing, but you can probably see there's four trees and that signifies my family of origin, parents and two daughters. And then there's four angels and those are my music angels. I had four amazing angel um, music teachers in my life. And at the bottom, I have Gandhi's saying, and I don't think you can probably see it, but it says, be the change you want in the world. Mm -hmm. And I see that hanging in my house every day. And this morning when I was in meditation, I realized that that's Gandhi's vibration and energy coming through my back and into my hands as I'm playing. And you're also aware that I helped clean a lot of Avon's files. So mm -hmm. I saved a lot of her papers for scratch paper. And this morning I was on the back of one of her, her things that she had written about Gandhi. And it's a little poster that she made about Gandhi. And he has five quotes at the bottom. And I thought these are perfect for our time together. Gandhi said, besides be the change you want to see in the world. For a nonviolent person, the whole world is one family. And I love that because that's unity consciousness. That's what Pathways to Peace is all about. And I'm so grateful for my connection to UTES and all the wonderful people that are in Pathways to Peace. And then he said, humankind can get out of violence only through nonviolence. Humankind can get out of violence only through nonviolence. And that's, again, what Pathways to Peace is. Hatred can only be overcome by love. And I believe that's also MLK said that. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe most powerful, it is possible to live in peace. So to me, I feel like that's a very powerful message from Gandhi um, as we are sojourning into these very important days around the Ukraine and these seven interviews that you've done such a beautiful job with, Tez. When you bring in beautiful people, it's just fun. To, to be in the same space and witness that wisdom. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Um, thank you. Uh, we are going to be closing. I'm so glad that you raised Dot Maver's name earlier, Tammy, because uh, Dot was quite influential 
in encouraging us to host these interviews leading up to uh, the beloved community convergence and the summit on the Ukraine. And um, while that can't be with us for these interviews, um, we decided that we would bring her into the sacred circle um, by closing our times with the global silent minute. And so having Dot's presence with us um, by sharing that global silent minute that um, is Dot's creation and her work in the world, along with so many other things. Um, but before we move to that, I first want to ask if you have any closing remarks, anything that you still like to say, um, or any remaining words on your heart, Tammy. I mentioned this earlier, but I do believe we are on a tipping point and a tipping point in the best, most universal way possible. And I'm very excited about that. And I'm so grateful to Pathways to Peace because I think you as an organization, we as an organization are on the cusp of something really magnificent and life-changing um, for so many people on the planet. And I'm deeply moved. I'm very grateful. And um, yeah, and I think the last thing I can say is thank you. Thank you, Soul Sister, for being on the the cusp and on the journey. What a what a blessing to be a part of that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tammy. I and we are so grateful for you. Yes, linking hearts on this journey. Yes, and may it be so, as they say. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. And thank you to our beloved audience here today. We hope you will leave inspired in your work for peace. I'm Tessakaya Gabriel from Pathways to Peace, the organization. And on behalf of the whole Pathways to Peace team, we hope you'll join us in the remaining days of these interviews with our peace leaders. Um, we're very excited because Tammy, our our beloved colleague and soul sister, Dr. Jenna Darko, will be with us here tomorrow at the same time in the same Zoom room. So again, 11.30 to 12.30 Eastern time, right here. We hope you'll join us. And now we're going to pause and I'm going to do my very best to uh, channel in Dot's beautiful voice in Dot's golden global silent minute. Dot invites you to participate in the daily practice of a global silent minute. The exact same minute everywhere calibrated to 9 p.m. GMT for global cooperation peace, and freedom. And now we will close with the global silent minute. In Dot's words, linking our hearts across distance, both sides of the veil, to invoke the spirit of peace as we hold the intention of the healing of nations, both within and between, for global cooperation, peace, and freedom. As we usher in the era of peace and put an end to all war and suffering, let us here now enter the silence together. We take a deep breath and activate the spirit of peace within our own hearts. And we link our fiery hearts across distance. 
Now we take another moment and we invite all those on the other side of the veil to cooperate with us. We will go into the silence now, distributing our intention for everlasting peace. Again, thank you everyone who has joined us in this sacred space, in this sacred circle. And a very special thank you to you, Tammy, for this time and for your work in the world. And at Pathways to Peace, we always say, you are a pathway to peace. And we say that to everyone here today, regardless of where you've been, where you've come from, where you are today, or where you're going, we know you are a pathway to peace. And peace prevails on earth. Thank you.